Hello, it's Patrick here from the Garage Band Guide. My Garage Band Quick Tip series has been a great way to share bite sized and actionable tips to you, the Garage Band Guide community. The series is on somewhat of a hiatus at the moment, so what better time to share the top five Garage Band for Mac quick tips in one big knowledge bomb YouTube sandwich thing? That's, that's what we're calling it. GarageBand's Concealed Controls explains how to access and use the extra features and controls that can be added to your project's track headers. Okay, so if we take a look at GarageBand's default track header controls, you have your track icon there, the mute button, the solo button, and the monitoring button alongside your volume and pan controls. you can add more controls to the track header. Right click anywhere on the track header and select configure track header from the menu that pops up. In this menu, I can add track lock, which bounces a track in place and frees up CPU power. Perfect if you've created some kind of monster project and are experiencing crashes, stutters, freezes, or the rise of the dreaded spinning beach ball of doom. <coughs> the record enable button arms a track for recording. This is used if you plan to record multiple tracks at the same time. I can also activate the groove track. This allows you to match the timing of other tracks in your project to the timing of this track when their match groove track checkbox is selected. In GarageBand's supercharged secret sounds, I wax lyrical about main stage and how installing it can drastically increase GarageBand's audio options. You've probably heard of Logic Pro 10, right? Apple's other pro digital audio workstation. You might not be aware of Mainstage, however, another Apple developed Mac program that's focused at the live performance side of things. Mainstage comes with a huge assortment of sounds, instruments, and patches or presets, and all of these can be used in GarageBand as well. All of Apple's music making programs on Mac share the same sound library. This means that if you purchase Mainstage, install it, then from inside Mainstage itself, choose to download all available sounds, you'll gain access to all of those additional instruments, patches and sounds inside GarageBand itself too. Coming in at under £30 slash $30, this is a fantastic way to supercharge your GarageBand sound library on the cheap. In GarageBand's Dumb Drum Dilemma, I demonstrate how to separate different elements of a drummer track, put them into separate software instrument tracks, and how to edit them individually. Okay, so first of all, you'll need to have created a drummer track and tweaked the pattern and fills, etc. to your liking. If you haven't got this far yet, I'll pop a link in the description below to a video where I walk you through how to set up a drummer track in GarageBand for Mac and how to get the most out of its features. Next, create a new software instrument track. Now, select either the individual drummer region you want to edit or click on the drummer tracks track header to select all regions. Copy your selected regions. You can select copy from the edit menu in the toolbar at the top of the screen or use the keyboard shortcut Command and C. Select your newly created software instrument track and paste, again either using the paste option in the toolbar or by using the keyboard shortcut Command and V. Now that your drummer track is in software instrument form, you'll need to select a drum kit from the library pane.
you can separate the different parts of the drum kit and copy paste them into software instrument tracks of their own. An easy way to do this is to select the software instrument track that you've pasted your drummer regions into and open the editor window, either by clicking the scissors icon in the top left of GarageBand's screen or by using the keyboard shortcut E. You can select all of the MIDI notes in a row by clicking on the corresponding key at the left of the editor window and again, copy them. Now open a new software instrument track and paste your copied MIDI notes into that track. Rinse and repeat for each part of your kit that you want to separate. Now that that's done, you can apply compression, reverb, panning and other effects to each part of the kit separately. Yes, it's definitely more time consuming, but can really raise the quality of your finished track and project overall. I show how you can quickly and easily turn your software instrument tracks into sheet music in GarageBand's score sharing solution. First off, select the software instrument track whose notes you want to save as sheet music. Open the editor window by either clicking on the scissors icon in the top left of the GarageBand window, selecting show editor from the view tab in the toolbar or by hitting the shortcut key E. Then click the score tab at the top of the editor window. You can change the stave view by clicking on the treble clef here. When you're ready to export or print your musical score, head to file in the toolbar and select print. From here, you can choose a printer in your network and print your notation directly. Or if you click on the PDF drop-down menu, you can choose to save your notation in PDF format, attach it to an email, or save it to iCloud Drive, amongst other things. The OG quick tip and still the most popular in GarageBand's secret sampler, I show how you can turn the musical typing keyboard into a rough and ready sampler. Okay, with GarageBand for Mac open, you'll want to open a new software instrument track. To bring up musical typing, either select show musical typing from the window menu in your toolbar or use the keyboard shortcut command and K. Next, open the library pane by clicking the library button in the top left, selecting show library from the view tab in the toolbar or hitting the shortcut key Y. Now from the library menu, navigate to legacy, then garage band, then sound effects, and then just pick any of the options you want. It really doesn't matter here. I'll go for applause and laughter because why not? If you don't have the legacy option available in the library pane in your version of GarageBand, open the GarageBand menu in the toolbar, hover over Sound Library and click on Download All Available Sounds. Now be warned, this can be a pretty sizable download depending on how much of this stuff you already have installed, so be aware that you may have to sit about and wait a while. On the musical typing keys, you'll notice these wee icons have appeared. If I expand this details menu, there's a list of what sound effect loops are attached to each key. If I adjust the octave range, you can see these keys are marked as empty. From here, I can open GarageBand's loop browser, 
find a loop I want to assign to a particular musical type and key, and then just drag and drop it in there. Out of sight. Out of sight. Out of sight. Out of sight. That loop will now play back when I hit the key that it's assigned to. Out of sight. And that is how you turn GarageBand's musical typing feature into a down and dirty makeshift sampler. There you have it, those are the top five most popular GarageBand for Mac quick tips. If you're hungry for more bite-sized GarageBand tips and tricks, you can devour the full playlist via the link I've popped in the description below. And if you have your own sneaky GarageBand hack, make sure to share it in the comments. I have been Patrick from the GarageBandGuide.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.